Terry Allen, inventing guitar mathematics, and I'm presenting the theory of open G minor guitar. Now, the first uh, example of open G minor that the Beatles used was in this 1958 song. in your eyes and I saw a nice little healthy eyeball and I love you black and yellow remarkable that the uh, Beatles had that kind of knowledge of open G minor in 1958 and it's it's sort of obvious from the opening of the song with that kind of cadential statement <laughs> another set of these chords down here so here this is the B flat is kind of on the bottom and the E flat and the F are on top and here the B flat is on top and the E flat and the F are on the bottom so this idea that you have these two different ways to play the same chords is different than on piano where each chord would have only one way that it could be played. So you have this kind of mix and match conditions where you can play G here or G here. And so most of the music I'm playing with those two elemental chords. This is a C minor, the bar, with one finger, C major. And this bar, I call it like a T bar, and it, it can serve as either a minor or a major. And this bar can also have that power chord quality where on these three strings it can be either major or minor, like this chord can be either G major or G minor. And then there's a third set of chords so this T bar has its tonic note, the note that names the chord here on the bottom string. And the bar chords, the C or C, have the note that names the chord here on the second bass string. And then there's a third set of chords that have their tonic on the third bass string that look like this. That's F, G. So I could play G. G. Another example is the Beatles uh, sort of surf music recording called Cry for a Shadow from 
trying to show is that open G minor is, is an idiom. It's a peculiar language structure where the meaning, the universally understood meaning of the music in terms of, a, say, a progression like C minor, A minor, uh, rather C, A minor, F, G. We understand that by listening without any real special training. It's a natural way of understanding music. But the construction of the, of the music on guitar is idiomatic in the sense that you can't derive the chords from the generally accepted meaning. And so this tuning, which is open G minor, it's D, G, D, G, G, B minor, D. It's closely related to open G and has a lot of the same features, but it's, it has a more diatonic uh, sound, an important uh, role in early rock and roll and in, in kind of Motown soul music uh, sound. And so what I'm trying to show is how simple it is to play uh, chords in this tuning and uh, how you already know, if you listen to Beatles music or rock and roll, you, you already know this tuning. Now there's never a point in Beatles music where you say, oh wow, they changed to open G minor tuning. But that's because you simply haven't studied the tunings because a, a small number of experiments would show to you that open G minor and open D minor have a different tonality and that you can recognize with, with training, you can recognize the difference between the tunings. Particularly illustrious song I think is Mr. Moonlight by Dr. Feelgood and the Interns, which the Beatles covered in 1964. And they you often say that the Beatles have no formal training in music, but actually I think they were literate musicians in the sense that they came up in the school of sheet music. And their cover of early songs like uh, The Sheik of Araby and my Bonnie lies over the ocean and show that they were probably able to read sheet music and they they learned to use chords on guitar in, in that way. So Mr. Moonlight goes like this. You came to me one summer night and from your being G minor, open G minor is good for playing in a minor key, and it is, but it it's also has this diatonicity that comes from having all of the diatonic chords accessible in sort of a match set. So C, C D minor, E minor, F, G. They're, uh, they're 
all easy to play chords and they have a, a nice voicing, a harmonically correct concert voicing so that this minor chord is, will always be a good chord. This one, I see minor, is a little bit more limited. So, when I'm looking for a song that would fit well in open G minor, I'm looking for a song that has minor chords in it, because if it's the song is all major chords, you probably won't get much advantage. Although that doesn't necessarily apply in blues, because open G minor has a really strong uh, blues uh, mode. But um, when you have a chord with, say, a, a song with three minor chords, that's going to be a good one for open G minor. And also a song that has maybe just one minor chord, like Mr. Moonlight, well, it has also an A minor, but one prominent chord where the minor chord has an important harmonic role can, can be enough to validate that open G minor tuning. So when I'm talking about open G minor tuning, I'm also thinking it's, it's relative to open A minor and open F minor. Now, this is a C chord, and I'm sort of standardizing everything to this intonation, where this, this note is D2, so that makes this open G, and then the C chord would be at the fifth fret, and in open A minor, the C chord will be at the third fret. And in open F minor, the C chord will be at the seventh fret. So when I hear the C chord in the record, or I see that the key signature in the musical score is C, and I'm always asking, okay, is this the C that's in open G minor? Or is it the C that's in open A minor or open F minor? Because they're in different places on the guitar. Now, a little uh, background in the context of open G minor. I, I think open G minor is the hardest one to learn of the Fab Four tunings, which are open D, open D minor, open G and open G minor. And open G minor is the hardest of those four kind of royal tunings to learn. And you may tend to think that it's a lesser uh, importance or has less currency than say open G. But actually I think it's the symmetry between those four tunings is enough by itself to show that open G minor is important. And what happens is if you go back and forth between tunings, say back and forth between open G minor and D minor, or open G minor and open G, there's kind of a honing because in one tuning you may be forced in to use a certain form and then later on you realize that's good for the other tunings too. So um, it, I think that even if it weren't so important in rock and roll, open G minor would be a good way to improve your knowledge of open G tuning. So, for example, we have um, this. This is a classic. And that minor chord on the five chord gives it a very primitive sound. Some people play it just all like one, four, five chords, all major chords, but that minor is a very important uh, part of that song. And the fact that you have this sort of six string minor uh, tells me that that's the tuning that the Kingsmen are using, open A minor. And then you also have this kind of thing. Oh, 
Jesus' name. All you who place your faith in fire, and you fire, your faith shall be restored. Piece with the Quicksilver Messenger Service, and I saw John Cipollino play, and I I knew that he was using the uh, open G minor tuning. He used to play like. placed on the guitar. The chords aren't crowded down in the open position that they spread across the neck. F A minor B e flat C And that has a, a very cool sound, I think. The, the chords are voiced in a way that, that's very interesting. flavor than this one which is subject to like left hand muting which is very expressive and precise whereas this one we would have to mute with the right hand. The theory of open G minor is, is a mathematical theory but the Beatles are not mathematicians there's no evidence that they used mathematics to learn guitar but we say that musicians who, who learn guitar without learning to read music learn by ear. But actually, if the C chord is the same C chord in every tuning, then it's not clear how you learn open G minor by ear. And so the, the question is, how did, they, how did the Beatles learn to play in open G minor tuning? And what I think is there's a there's couple of obvious ways besides just reading the chords and sheet music. And one is to take music that's in open G and change it 
into open G minor and that transformation basically amounts to the algebra of augmenting notes on the second string by one fret because you tune the string down one semitone and then to correct that you move every note on that string up one fret. So you can look at that as a way to induct music from open G into open G minor. Add one fret to the second string and, but then you have to rewrite the music because sometimes that algebra will result in an unplayable figure and sometimes uh, you lose one thing. For example, in this E minor chord is a great chord in open G, but in uh, open G minor it's a little bit more diminished because I don't have these, this B flat note which would be B in open G is is not enharmonic and so you think that might sort of cripple that chord but actually it turns out you would just use this like E minor in this the same way that you do in open G if you know how to use this important T bar chord in open G then it's basically the same thing in open G minor but there are some differences and one is in this position here this is the E flat chord and now it's harmonized with that B flat in fact the, that you have G B flat D would make this a minor uh, excuse me an E flat major 7 The other thing that you have is this E flat, which you could consider to be derived from open D minor, which has that marvelous open position B flat chord. It looks like this, it has two fingers. And so when you go from open D minor to open G minor, you move everything to one higher set of strings. So I move this to a higher set and then I end up with this and I pick up the E flat. So that's kind of an astonishing thing because it's an open position E flat chord. And usually the E flat chord in standard tuning say is, is not a very favorable chord and one that you could play if you have to, but you sort of like to avoid it because it, it's not uh, very easily fingered and it's just not as expressive, say, as the E chord. So these open position chords are part of what make the tonality of this tuning different. So you have the E flat there, and you also have this open position C minor. is you have an alteration in the favorable key profile. So that's one way that we know these tunings is by the keys on, inside the tuning that are useful. Now obviously G or G minor is useful and it's not hard to see that C and D are also useful. So you have like the G, you can mark the sort of reference lines out, you have G, the 6th chord here, the 4th chord here, the 5th chord here, then if I'm looking at C, that's a 1 chord, this is a 6th chord, 4, 5, and if you look at D, there's the 1 chord. keys that this the B minor has a sixth chord in the open position. So that's that's a nice spacing and a strong key. And then you have the E flat which has its So, when I see a song that has E flat, B flat chords, 
maybe F minor, C minor, maybe uh, B flat, G minor. I'm, I'm thinking about this open G minor tuning because I know that those chords are going to be really easy to play whereas in standard tuning you're looking at E flat and maybe F is like kind of awkward chords that you are kind of hard to play as beat music where you're playing it fast and expressively. <laughs> of this flat six chord coming down on the five and preceded by in one case by the the A7 and when you compare that to the version that the Beatles actually play in open D minor you see that I'm holding the key constant in, in both tunings, the key of the song is G, G minor, but in the open D, the G minor chord is played at the fifth fret, and in this tuning, it's played at the, in the open position. So, even though they have the same observed key, the tonality on the guitar is, is quite different. And it's, it, it's a way of changing from open D minor to open G minor where you move everything back five frets. Or if you want to go from open D to open G, you move everything up seven frets. And the uh, other way to do it is to, go f is to move to a higher set of strings and that will change the key. So one way I think that the Beatles uh, compile music in these different tunings is simply by uh, by ear because they they know the uh, the double stops in devil in her heart and it's a fairly easy thing to just sort of accommodate them in this tuning by adding that one note the augmenting the fret on the second string so you have same position as in open D minor but that that transposes the key so the bar is is actually kind of shifted over to the higher set of strings but it's it's quite easy to remember or to see how the two are symmetrically related the, uh, the song in, in open G minor and open D minor as sort of a simple relation that's easy to figure out. It's a mathematical relation, but the Beatles understand it intuitively. Now, these double stops are always a, uh, an interesting study, and 
So I'm looking for songs that um, the Beatles play that can be played in several different tunings. And they have the idea that they're systematically going back and forth between these four uh, royal tunings and seeing which songs can be played in which tunings to some advantage. And so uh, I'm not sure whether Blackbird is in open G or open G minor. I think it's in open G because it's easier to remember, but it's an interesting study to play it in open G minor. It's a more chordal arrangement. And it, it's helpful to um, learn how to finger, finger those double stops using that song. They, um, these open G double stops, open G minor, on this string They're, they're inverted in the sense that in standard tuning the index finger is on the higher string and lower fret and in open G the index finger is on the lower fret but also the lower string and it's sort of a little bit annoying that they prefer the form in standard but that's still, still useful and then on these strings you have this, another kind of inversion where you see this, this, this string is, is higher whereas in standard it would be in the, uh, the lower fret. And so if you're, if you're listening to somebody play this in, the, in these two tunings you, you might not be able to distinguish the difference but for the player, there, there's a big difference in the way these are expressed and the, the way that the, the double stops function. That, that's kind of hard to understand unless you actually do the experiment on the guitar. So I want to show, this is a cover song they did, and I, I want to show you how it's got the, that kind of a Motown sound. <laughs>
those songs where the observed key is A, but I think it's pro they're probably playing it in the guitar key of G relative to this standard D2 intonation. And the reason I think that is because in the Beatles complete score they have this kind of uh, introduction and they go, Oh yes, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. And the guitar goes. And it's just a little little lick because they um, they only put the guitar parts you hear in the record, so they don't show that lick anywhere else in the song. But that it's kind of a cool walk in to the sixth chord. But it could also be played in, in standard tuning. Could be this this fretted note and this open string note are the same, so whether you go like this, or it's pretty much the same thing, but the second version using the open string is, is easier. But the difference in parsing the key is that if you're looking at this as in standard tuning and you have this riff, then the song's in A because this is, this would be A and the rest of the song would fit in A in standard tuning but in this tuning the rest of the song would be in G because this note is G so that's an example of how easily confused you can be by the guitar intonation because the tuning is the same at any pitch, or a better way to say it is the tuning is the same until you name the note. So this tuning that goes five, five, seven, five, three, four uh, is is the tuning, and the intonation determines whether it's open G minor or open A minor. And that tuning algorithm, the set of intervals between, a set of five intervals between six strings, is what defines the tuning. Five, seven, five, five, seven, five, three, four. So you have there the, the seven here, and the three and the four are very unusual, and they um, they're way different than standard tuning. And so you have these chords like this one. This is F chord. This this is derived from the regular F bar chord in standard tuning, but it's so derivative that it's hard to see how it's related. So the thing that's weird about open G minor is the chords are very different and they're uh, they're kind of hard to learn because you're playing chords like this E E flat but you haven't seen in any other tuning and it creates kind of a stumbling block where you you come upon this chord in one way or another and you say to yourself well that's a weird chord and I haven't seen people play that before so I don't think I'm going to use it when actually you should be you should be thinking like hmm I wonder what that chord is good for and so it turns out that E flat is really a good key in open G minor tuning so this is this is an example you'll never know how much I need really
is when I imported the music from the Beatles Complete Scores into this tuning. I had it in the key of E instead of E flat. And I had a note on my uh, transcription that the chords were interesting but they seem a little bit too hard to play it to tempo because in that key you're playing all bar chords no open position chords and also this works out pretty well but by comparison when you shift it down one step for the key you get a, a marked improvement because first of all you have the possibility of the open E flat chord and then the G minor can also be open so where is it's walking down like that this can be replaced by the open position and so that makes it a little bit easier to play and the chord, the song is interesting because it has five minor chords in it, which is hard, kind of hard to find a Beatles song with more than three minor chords. And it's partly because of that introduction. But the, the song is kind of reminiscent of the love of the lovers. Each time I look into your eyes, there I see that heaven lies. And the look I see is the So this, this tuning is being worked by the Beatles for the minor chords and the songs that have a lot of minor chords will, will fit into this tuning very well. Here's another example. from E flat to E and um, it's a very easy key change because of these matched chords. It would be a more difficult key change to do in standard tuning because that, that D flat chord and that F sharp chord it would kind of be a, a more challenging than in, in this version. And I, I think those chords show that uh, kind of Beatlesque tonality of these these chords. They're, they're kind of uh, have a ching ching uh, trebly quality, and uh, it's uh, very consonant with certain rock songs. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. descending minor progressions uh, where you have the B minor, 
And this is a B minor 7, major 7, B minor 7, and B minor 6. G family tunings, it, the open G has four immediate relatives that differ by one string. One is open G minor, the other is open, uh, or rather drop G, or G6 tuning. And then you have a double drop D, it differs just by a note on the second bass string. And then this family of C tunings are derivative of the G family, where you drop the D down to C. So, this is D. Now to the bass string to D to C. And this, this has an unusual effect because by ear, it's really hard to hear the difference between those notes. But when you play this, it, it really uh, has a, a big effect. It kind of sort of uh, tilts the, the tuning in favor of the key of C, but it, it also kind of electrifies the C because you've got that sustained note, uh, which is at the bottom end of the C chord. So whenever you have a song in open G, open G minor, in the key of C, you're always wondering, well, maybe the, maybe the drop C variant will be better. And so I think this is an example. Same thing in open G, but somehow the tonality of it is, is different, even though you're playing the same notes. sound almost the same but but when you you when you're operating the guitar it's it you really notice the difference Love 
so I think that song on the record is an open D minor, but that it certainly has a nice symmetry in this tune with that bass, that bass roll keyed on that open string on the open D string, which is important because it gives you time to lift up the bar. It's just a simple uh, minor mode progression. I've got a word or two to say about the things you do. You're telling all those lies about the good things that we can have if we close our eyes. Do what you want to do. So that's 
that song has really got that open G minor tonality, and it's it's fairly simple in terms of its chordal structure, but it needs a, a careful attention to detail. Like a lot of tablature, you have to um, be very careful about which chords you're playing and how you finger them to get that uh, marvelous tonality that George Harrison has in that song. And it's, it's really clear that George Harrison is a big fan of open G minor. Oh. subtract one. We're, we're adding one note on the second string to go from open G to open G minor. Now if I want to take this lick back to open G, what happens is this open string has to move down onto the third string and so the character of this lick played on that open string is somewhat modified when you go to open G because you have to play the notes here. So it, it has somewhat of a different character. So that the introduction that's G that's C with the characteristic problem that you have to let go of this note. sheet music, but the, um, 
the chords behind it are revealing because you have Could be E flat, G, or G. Six, four, five. Which would be too obvious if the song started that way or the whole song ran through that like a canon, but it's kind of a refreshing surprise at the at the end of that song for that uh, well-known progression to come out at the end. <laughs> bass works out in this tuning and how the chords are, uh, are kind of interesting with the, um, the walk up on the minor chord. Now I want to show th three songs that are um, similar and they're recorded at three different intonation levels on the guitar, which kind of suggests that they're systematically working this progression and they want it to, to sound different, so it's not like they're using the same progression in every song. And the, the songs are characterized by this drop from the G to the Thank you. 
what you do. You say I'm putting you on, but it's no joke. You do me harm, and I can't sleep. I can't stop my brain, you know it's three weeks, and I'm going to see you know I do everything I got for you. He's in G, but it'll be F for you. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now and this is the day to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. because of that B minor chord. And then that, that chord.
cool lick at the end. That seems to be a bit, uh, sort of an open G minor, or actually to match the record, open A minor lick. She came in through the bathroom window. songs that oscillate back and forth between the minor and major mode. songs in open G minor. Now compilation is a word in the dictionary that means to combine materials in a volume like I've done with this tablature and this this notebook. And it also means to prepare material from other material. And in computers the compiler is the part of the computer that translates the software language that's user-friendly into the machine language that's not so user-friendly. And inherent in the idea of compiling uh, a language is the optimization of the grammar, the classification of the grammar, and the sorting of grammar into groups that make sense. And so what I've tried to show here is that open G minor is not a rare, unusual tuning. It's an iconic tuning in early rock and roll and uh, an important tuning in the secret guitar music intelligence of the Beatles. Now, how the Beatles play guitar is something that the publisher doesn't know, that the music teachers don't know, and that semanticists and linguists are, are not interested in. So it's truly a secret language, but it can be discovered by a sufficient number of experiments. And I'm not saying that I've learned how to play all of these Beatles songs, but I think the general trend of what I'm showing 
is is a, a investigation into Beatles guitar music intelligence, and I hope it's useful for other guitarists.